Hey guys, I'm Aiden Beaversdorf alongside David McAtee, and today we're going to be going over who are the best playoff contenders and who has a chance to make a Super Bowl run. Uh, for me, I think uh, the top playoff contender is going to be the Buffalo Bills. I think I, I love what they did in the offseason. They went out and got Von Miller, a great edge rusher, to finally get pressure on these top-tier AFC quarterbacks. I think Josh Allen will continue to progress. I think the running game will get going a little bit more this year with Zach Moss, and I really love what they're doing with Stephon Diggs. And we already saw what Gabriel Davis could do uh, if he has the right opportunity. So I feel the Bills will come out of the AFC and if not win the championship this year. I think that's a good take. Also, other teams to worry about for the Bills. The Bengals could be going back for revenge this year. The Chiefs are always there because Mahomes never goes away. And then you've got the other teams, maybe the Patriots. I doubt it, though. Um, who knows about the Ravens coming back? What about on the NFC side? Yeah, the NFC is certainly going to be weaker than the AFC this year, in my opinion. But when you have Tom Brady in a team on a team, that team is already a Super Bowl contender, especially with the weapons the Bucs have. Uh, I think Gronk will come back for that team. I think they'll be a contender. I think when you have Aaron Rodgers on the Packers, that's automatically a contender. And obviously, there's the defending champ Rams. The Rams are going to be a extremely good team this year. They've, they've somehow gotten better despite what they did last year with the signings of Allen Robinson, who I think will be a major uh, major help, especially if Odo Beckham Jr. can't uh, be fully healthy to play this year. And I think the Rams or the other two teams I mentioned are going to be the teams coming out of the NFC. And I think some other maybe wild card teams that might sneak in, who knows, the Falcons and Saints, those teams could be sleeper teams. Um who even knows? Maybe the Cowboys, they could do something, maybe win the division, I'm hoping. And um, I don't really know anyone else. That It seems like the about it for the teams. Um, now let's talk about the NBA. Finals, Game 3, um, Celtics, Warriors. Who's going to come out on top? For Game 3, I'm going to take the Warriors, and I'll also take the Warriors in the series. I think that the Warriors are just, honestly just the more experienced team, the better team. I think that when Curry gets going and they have reliable bench scoring from Jordan Poole off the off the bench, and they can just if they can just get Clay going, like because in game two, Clay Thompson, one of the worst games I've ever seen. Because when Clay Thompson's off, it's just bad for the Warriors because he's a spot up shooter. If spot up shooters are missing shots and he's not doing anything else on offense, he becomes an offensive liability. So I believe that he'll get going, and I think the Warriors are gonna be hard to stop. I think they'll steal at least one game in Boston, get home court advantage back, and end up winning the series. Um, I think Boston has amazing bench scoring as well. If the starters can perform, the bench players can come in, play some defense, shoot the right shots, and make them. I really think the Celtics could take game three. And we have a question. Um, if the Warriors were to end up losing this series, what do you think would be the cause of that? Um, I think if the Celtics can step it up on defense and uh, – the Warriors would obviously, if they if their shooting just doesn't pick up, kind of like it was in game one, I think that would be the cause of that. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be the role players. I seriously think that if the, if Boston has anything similar with that in game one, if Al Horford's making open shots, if Derek White's making open shots, if Peyton Pritchard's making open shots, then they really can't be beat because they're focusing so much on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and to where these guys, if, if they're making shots, you, you can't be beat because now what are you doing? You're focusing on these – perimeter shooters and now you're leaving Jason Tatum in one-on-ones where he can go to the rim and do what he does or Jalen Brown in one-on-ones where he can do what he does and make these step back threes so I think that that's the key for the Celtics and for the Warriors they really just have to know that they have to be the better team and just play play do the done all year play good defense make your shots and I think I think they will win but that's the key for the Celtics him I agree Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Aiden Beaversdorf alongside David McAtee. We'll see you next time.